Okay, so um, yeah, so today's class is not going to be a very long class. It's just some things I just wanted to, uh, you know, finish up whatever we were discussing the previous time. Um, so what we were doing last time was, uh, you know, we looked at temporal difference learning, right? So that was a way in which we tried to evaluate uh, the value of a policy. Uh, give it, uh, for a fixed policy, we tried to learn the value of it, of the value of all the states under this policy. And what we wanted to do is we wanted to learn on the fly. We didn't want uh, a scheme where you know you collect all the data and then you do the learning. We didn't want that kind of a separation. So that's what we were going into. And so the way to do it was with temporal difference learning. And uh, where the idea was you keep you maintain a moving average Right. And because the value of a state, of, after all, it is an expectation that we are trying to learn. And uh, so, you know, an average is a good estimate for an expectation. And we try to keep this, uh, you know, moving average. So, uh, yeah, so this was the kind of update we had. This worked because, uh, you know, I think I wrote it somewhere. Yeah. So the value of every state was basically an expected value of some reward. So because these there were these transition probabilities, the main thing was that was not known in a reinforcement learning setup. So the idea was to learn uh, something about the transition probabilities, though not explicitly. And uh, so this uh, you know parameter, I mean, this term inside, so it was the expected value of that that we were trying to evaluate in temporal difference learning. Um, so that's why we we went for an average and uh, we saw this kind of an update where you know we give a weightage of one minus alpha for the old estimate and an alpha weight for the new data that you see in okay and uh, the data that you saw in so we constructed in this way so if you observe a transition like this uh, from a state s you take an action pi of s which is a policy given to you and you go to s dash and there's a reward that you see so the sample was this reward R uh, plus gamma times V S dash, where gamma is the discount parameter and V of S dash is the value of the new state. Okay, So always this kind of a uh, you know, picture, if you keep in your mind, it will be easy to write these updates. Okay, So um, yeah, so this is how, what we said was temporal difference learning. And of course, if the alphas are small, um, you know, uh, given enough samples, this is going to converge to the value of a policy. Okay, and we just saw this overall algorithm. So uh, one point I wanted to mention here is, uh, you know, there was a couple of schemes we saw for evaluating a policy. So these kind of, uh, you know, this kind of framework is called a passive reinforcement learning framework. Okay, so it's pa passive RL because you're not actually deciding what action to choose. Because at this stage, you know, the action is always fixed. At a state, you're going to choose a policy, I mean, that the what the policy tells you. And you're not going to make a decision on what action you take. So because of that, uh, this uh, kind of framework is called passive RL. So where you, uh, you learn the, where you follow actions as per a policy. Actions as per a given policy. as per a given policy pi, okay? And um, so this is something we did last time and I showed you some demos of why uh, this kind of an update really works. And we saw how, you know, we saw some steps of how to write these updates for the grid world example, for a very toy grid world example. And uh, then what we were saying is, okay, so if we have a fixed policy, now temporal difference learning helps us to, uh, you know, estimate the values of the states. But actually what we want ultimately is the optimal policy, right? So how should we go about? Because here we are learning the values and the values is, uh, you know, for a fixed policy and you actually want a max value. You want to do a max over various actions you want to choose what's the best action for each state so in that case this kind of uh, an update is not helping right and uh, that's where we uh, were heading to last time and i told you that you know q learning is the way to do that 
So what you do is that, OK, the values V star with the Bellman equations is the max over these uh, actions, the max value of this expectation over the actions. Okay. Now, if you instead, I mean, if you try to keep learning the values, this V star directly, it's not possible to evaluate actions. You need to ultimately be able to evaluate actions. So instead, what if you try to learn the Q values? So this term, the expectation is actually what we defined as Q star of SA. So that is, we are in a state S. You take some action and there's an intermediate state you go to. That is called the Q state. And after that, there is uh, some randomness plays in and uh, the truth, the next state is dash uh, appears. Okay. And uh, so the idea is that at every point of time, at every state, you want to do the optimal action. You want to take the optimal action. And uh, V star is the value of the optimal action. If you take the optimal action, uh, you know, the utility the best utility that is v star so that's why we had this update where the expected value uh, what you take inside is the reward the one step reward plus gamma times v star of s dash because in the next time onwards you will start from s dash and you will continue to be optimal and this is what we said was q star of s a for a given action a um, so is this something that we can directly you know learn from the samples and uh, we saw that, you know, again, there is this V star here, which, you know, if we are trying to learn only the Qs, then what do we do about this V star? Okay. So the idea was at every point, you wherever you see a V star, after all, because V star is a max of Q um, S A. So V star S is always a max of Q S A. And wherever you see V star, you just replace it with a max. Okay. So the idea is that you start off with the cues for every state and action you fix it as zero initially now the moment you see some data s a s dash r so this is a transition that you observe and the sample is this this is the new sample okay this is how you construct the new sample you take r plus gamma times the uh, you take q now from s dash because that's where the new uh, tra the transition led you to s dash Okay. And you start from there and you see what was the best action and you take the max of that. So this is your current estimate. Okay, So let me just write this here. So this is actually based on the, you know, like, or let me just say the previous estimate. Previous estimate. Okay, so all this is based on the previous estimate. Okay, and this is the uh, new value you get. New estimate for SA. Okay, so you keep doing this and uh, at any point now, uh, if you want to find the optimal policy, what you do is you just take the max of QS values at whatever point you are in and you take the best action. So that you say is the policy, that's the conclusion. And uh, if you do this enough number of times, uh, it will converge to the optimal policy. Now, one uh, thing here is that I just told you that this transition is given. I didn't tell you, like, you know, is there something more you have to do it? I mean, this is like if you always try to take the same action, then you're all only going to learn something about that particular action. You're not going to see anything else. OK, so uh, so that is something which I told you that you know we'll discuss today. Like, how do you generate these transitions or what is the data that you should be generating? Right. Um, because you need to be able to explore enough. Like with, uh, if you remember, like a few classes back, we saw this uh, example of this restaurant, right? Where, you know, there's a new restaurant, you don't know much about it. And if you have to learn something about it, you need to go, you need to explore this restaurant a couple of times, right? You need to, not once, not twice, but a couple of times you need to visit to get some idea of how good it is, right? So the same thing you need to do even here, like in Q-learning. Um, because you need to, yeah, you need to explore all the actions enough number of times. Okay. So, uh, that's where, you know, there is this exploration exploitation dilemma. Okay. So I don't know if you have seen this, uh, already, but yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. So the dilemma is that, you know, you want to always try to do better. You want to do the best thing at every point of time. But at the same time, you want to explore something that you have not seen so that, uh, you know, maybe that is actually a good option, which you haven't seen before. So you have to do both these, you know, you have to maintain a balance between both exploration and exploitation. Balance between exploring um, new actions or lesser seen actions. And uh, so, so this is one option and the other is choosing the best you have seen so far. Choosing the best so far. So the reason why this is important is like, um, yeah, you don't want to uh, spend a lot of episodes with learning and then be able to choose the optimal. What you want to do is you want to simultaneously learn as well as, uh, you know, keep improving your chances. So that's like how in real life it happens, right? You don't uh, spend a lot of time to figure out what is good and then you choose something. It's always like it's on the fly. You learn and you implement things uh, uh, parallelly, right? So it's the same idea here. So uh, what you can do is, you know, um, yeah, okay. So let me just pause here for a minute. So are there any, do you have any thoughts how you can improve the exploration or is this dilemma clear to you? What is this dilemma that we are talking of? Is that clear? Yes. So Advait, it's clear. Uh, what about the rest of you? Yes. 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 Okay. Right. Okay, good. So let's, uh, yeah, so maybe let me just ask you guys. So you have some, uh, you know, maybe some, there are some data that you already had and you got uh, these Q states. Now, how do you know you're done, right? I mean, uh, do you have some thoughts on how you can explore or what you should do at each point? Should you try to explore new states or should you just go with the best estimate you have, the best action at each state? Choose a random action. Yes, Aditya Jain is saying choose a random action. Yes, ideally that's what you want to do. You know, keep choosing randomly and so that your learning improves. Uh, but the thing is that, uh, you know, so, you know, if you had learned, I mean, if you have done a lot of random actions, uh, then maybe your learning is sufficient, right? And maybe if you do some more random actions, maybe uh, you end up going suboptimal too often, right? Uh, there's this notion of regret. Uh, I don't know if I told you about it. So uh, did I tell you about the regret? Are you familiar with this term regret? I didn't tell you about regret. Okay. So there's this notion of regret, which means, uh, let me just go down itself. So there's this um, term called regret. It's a metric actually. So what it means is, um, you know, if you had chosen the best, if you uh, choose, so you choose an action A. So let me just say here, this choose action A um, at the state, choose action A at the state S. And maybe the best action, so, uh, so this is one option. The second option was maybe there was some action A star. That was the best to do, best at state S. Okay. So by best, I mean that this would have given the best value, right? Uh, so Q of S A star. So suppose that was greater than Q S A for every other uh, action. Okay. So A prime, let me call it. So A star was the best thing to do, but you chose action A. So now what is the regret? What is the loss? So the loss in choosing a suboptimal action loss in choosing a suboptimal action, that is what is regret. Okay. Loss in choosing a suboptimal action. So that is what is, uh, you know, I'm just telling it like very loosely, but of course we can define it more formally. Uh, so this is the regret. And this is something that you also want to minimize. You want to be optimal to the extent possible, but you also want to, uh, you know, explore enough. 
because you know if you don't uh, if you explore just once or twice maybe you know your estimates are not good enough so you want to do uh, this learning as well as minimize the regret so that's the whole issue now if you do a completely random action so completely random action if you take so at every state you're going to say that i'm going to randomly choose an action up to some point it's okay you will learn your estimates well but this will lead to large uh, regret so this leads to large regret so do you see that uh, right because uh, maybe like you know uh, you know there may there was like one episode you learned something your episode 2 3 up to 100 maybe it was okay to do a random action but maybe at this point you at every state you were confident of your estimates you got a q hat of s i mean so you had you learned this q s a for every state for every action and for every state and maybe this was a good estimate but still next time if you're going to do a random uh, thing maybe the, then the regret can be bad okay so that's the issue with going random all the time okay um so you will actually see an example of this in your lab okay so that that will be the next lab i mean like that will be after your midterms and uh, at that point you will see how it works if you completely go random so advait is saying something we flip a coin and decide if to choose random action or take the greedy choice yeah so that's exactly um, uh, what is prescribed it's a you know it's a famous algorithm so it's called epsilon greedy okay so this is another uh, option that you have so epsilon greedy what it does is uh, choose the random action so there's a parameter epsilon so this is a parameter and what you do is at at every state so let me just write it a bit properly so at every state at every state in your you know episode at every state is what you do is uh, with probability epsilon so with probability with probability epsilon take a random action and uh, with probability 1 minus epsilon what you do is you take the action that you have at uh, the currently learned best action so the take so that was remember we had this argmax right argmax over you know all the actions uh, qsa okay so take the best action with a probability 1 minus epsilon and with probability epsilon you take a random action so this is a parameter that you are free to choose right so if you choose epsilon equal to um 0 so if epsilon is 0 what you are doing is you are doing a greedy choice by greedy what we mean is you are always going to take the best estimate so far the best learned value best learned action so far so if epsilon is greed 0 this will be like a greedy choice okay and if epsilon is 1 what would it be complete exploration complete exploration right yeah completely random right so you don't want both these both these are like two extremes uh, you know in the spectrum so choose something in between like maybe epsilon is 0.5 or 0.6 so that is something which you know it depends on on the domain many times and as a learner you know how uh, you know quickly you want to do things okay so if you take uh, you know epsilon is very small then maybe you know uh, that also may not be too good Uh, because you may not see the other states very well very the other actions you may not have seen it enough yeah, so it's a, it's a kind of trade off that you make okay so this is kind of the you know standard uh, uh, framework people use so this is q learning with epsilon greedy q learning with epsilon greedy uh, exploration uh now there are also other uh, schemes for exploration so there are these uh, you know this there is literature on multi armed bandits if you see which has you know different kind of exploration schemes so there are some things in which you have a metric which tells you how good you are exploring how i mean how much you have explored a state 
okay and uh, so if you have already seen a state a lot of times then maybe you skip it and try something else so there are such things also so we are not going into those details for now i don't want you to you know load you with too much information also before the exams uh, so yeah the epsilon greedy typically it does perform quite well and uh, generally before q learning there are uh, guarantees you know if you have provided you explored enough uh, you know it converges to the optimal policy so it converges to the optimal policy okay so this is a you know this is a result that has been proved okay and it actually does quite well okay so yeah you will see some of this in action in your lab itself so i will just show you maybe a very quick demo of it so just so that you're familiar with, uh, you know, you know what uh, to expect from the labs. So it's again the grid world example. I'm going to do a Q-learning uh, setup. I'm just going to do 10 episodes. And uh, I'm fixing the epsilon as like 0.1. So with probability 0.1, I explore uh, you know, a random action. And uh, there's a noise of 0.1. So this is, uh, you know, something that decides like the transition probabilities, right? What is the underlying transition probability? That is what this parameter tells. So here you see that you know it's trying some action, okay. So and it's parallelly you know getting some sense of you know it's seeing some rewards. So here all the rewards are zero, and uh, it's uh, taking some actions because I've not fed it any policy that it has to take. So yeah, it's just doing something. And uh, hopefully it reaches a terminal soon. So only when it reaches a terminal here that it gets the rewards, right? So it, it okay. So one episode it came to the good terminal. So the top right was the good terminal state, and uh, there was a reward it got of 0.5. Okay, and uh, so it has to still see enough number of episodes to you know update the Q values. Okay, so now you see that there is one update here, which happened that was 0.23. Um, and so it's doing better and better. And so you see like now it's very confident and it's every time it's taking this action, right? Uh, so this is like, I just gave 10 episodes and I set a very small value of epsilon. So it didn't explore, you know, some of these other states. So you see that, you know, these four uh, numbers in each of these uh, boxes that gives you, I mean, that corresponds to each of the actions. Okay. Uh, so I think, I hope uh, you remember this. Um, so the, in this top, uh, top left corner, if you take a right action, the Q value estimated was 0.59. So that's what this means. And so you see that, you know, these other states, it never saw the bad terminal. It never saw some of these other states because it didn't explore enough. The epsilon value was very small. Okay, so let us just see what happens if maybe you increase the epsilon. So maybe I'll keep it as 0.8. Okay. So it's now trying something. It got some, um, you know, it is seeing positive rewards. Um, yeah, so it's doing some more exploration before it can converge to the right one. So you see now it's exploring some of these other states because I gave like some more exploration uh, because that exploration parameter was high, 0.8. So it's a bad state. And so you see, you know, it says that these, uh, you know, the bottom rightmost place, if it goes north, it's a bad thing. It's trying to learn that. Okay, so this is after 10 episodes. I mean, I just wanted to, you know, illustrate this to you. Uh, but, you know, if you try it for more number of episodes, I mean, if you increase it large, large enough, you will see that, you know, almost all the grids you learn enough. Okay, uh, so Rishabh has a question. Would you tell how to decide epsilon values and how we conclude that given epsilon value satisfactory? So, yeah, so un unfortunately, there is... Um, uh, there is no fixed way to know that, you know, this is the right thing to do. Uh, it's, as I said, it's a trade-off. Uh, it also depends on how much samples you have at your disposal, right? If you have like infinite time, then you can set a slightly, you know, larger epsilon like this. Like if you set a 0.8 or something, uh, 
then you know it helps you i mean if you have enough if you have like infinite time you can set a large epsilon because at some point uh, you will get the right policy and your regret will be less after that but if you have like very few uh, you know time steps left if suppose you are you have only some 50 time steps then maybe you want to choose a smaller epsilon because you can't spend the whole time exploring you also want to keep doing as best as you can so it's a trade off exactly okay uh so rishab is asking is it trial and error type yeah it's a um, i mean you typically don't get to change your epsilon values uh, through the runs uh typically you decide it beforehand and uh, yeah so a point 1 something like that is too less um you know point 9 point 9 for that maybe like too large so something in between point 7 point 6 that is like typically a reasonable choice okay um so kartik is epsilon a learning rate metric in some way so uh, it's not exactly a learning rate uh, in the sense of you know like we saw this value of these alphas right uh, right so there was this alpha weight that you gave for each sample so that was a learning rate uh, epsilon is not a learning rate exactly it's just telling you like you know uh, how much you spread out how much you cover ground um so that's what is learning rate is something like you know you see like it's about the number of samples of the same thing right that's the difference between the learning rate and it's okay okay so why can't we have a changing epsilon like start up with an epsilon of 1 and reduce it by some small value for each episode yeah that you could do i mean the only thing is um yeah you that is something you i mean it, You know, in empirically these are things that sometimes people do try but typically what happens is you uh, decide to go with some epsilon because maybe you don't have the luxury to change things in between right so the, uh, but yeah i mean nothing it's not like a hard and fast thing that you cannot do it okay it's just depending it's just dependent on the application the particular framework in which you get the samples uh, whether it allows for you know things to be tweaked in between and so on okay um, so it's a choice it's of course dependent on each of each application you deploy this okay ma'am uh, but here what we want to do is we want to get the maximum reward at the end right so yes every time we want to uh, get the final policy so yes. to get the final policy it is just an exploitation yeah it is see if you knew everything perfectly about the system then it's just exploitation that's fine okay if you everything was known to you all the values and everything that is known to you then it's obvious it's just you just choose whichever action is the best but the issue is that you never know that um, you know i mean you you don't know that you know the values right because at each point you are updating and you don't you never know how much is enough right but uh, if we make epsilon to be constant like if we set an epsilon to be 0.4 something like this then mm -hmm. isn't it going to explore at some time like we yeah. want to stop the exploration at some time so that it can converge to an exploitation yeah. Yeah, yeah. So uh, that's the thing, right? I mean, uh, if it is something, some epsilon you set, some uh, non-zero epsilon, if you set, it's going to do choose a random action with some probability, right? Uh, but this is needed to improve your estimates. Okay, uh, if you knew already, like how much, how many episodes you need to, you know, explore, and how many samples you need exactly, if you knew, then you could do this. You can stop after some time. You can just uh set epsilon to be 0 and you can choose the best but the issue is like you don't have a precise estimate of how many samples you need to get a good estimate okay. right so that's that's the trade off that we're making by you know using the epsilon and trying different values okay yeah so any other questions okay so okay i think yeah i mean i don't have more to add on this um, so i think this i just wanted to talk to you about this epsilon greedy uh, kind of mechanism 
and uh, yeah so maybe like as a homework what you can do is you can just try out what q learning gives you for this example of course you don't have these values but suppose you just saw these transitions b e c minus 2 c e s d minus 2 and maybe the last take was a d so let's just write it here so if you had a b east minus 2 and so this is the first transition and c east minus 2 and finally exiting with a d so d there is no action and uh, so the reward that you got was maybe a plus 10 okay so try some uh, you know keep some samples like this and see what q learning gives you and also you can um, i mean you could also just try to implement uh, you know, with some data, you just try to simulate some data, fix, uh, you know, MDP beforehand, and then just try to draw samples of each of the transition probabilities, use that as the data, and then see how you can uh, estimate, estimate the Q values. Okay. Um, yeah, this is just something for you to try out. Uh, so I think uh, in light of the exams, I think I will stop here for today. Uh, the next topic would be about you know how to make q learning faster when you have like a lot of states uh, how can you improve it but i think i'll i'll do that after your uh, midterms okay so yeah maybe we'll stop here for today and um, yeah so uh, thanks everyone for coming and um, yeah we'll see you on uh, monday again. okay so monday afternoon so Good luck, everyone, with the preparations. And feel free to reach out if you have any questions. OK. All right, thanks. Thanks. Thank you.